Hey there chemists, in this lesson we're going to start looking at how to name organic compounds and we're going to stick with just hydrocarbons today. Uh, linear alkanes, cyclic alkanes, and some branched alkanes. Every chemist should know that the number of carbons is denoted by a prefix, meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, and dec for 1 through 10. And you should know those 10 prefixes. There are prefixes for other carbon counts. Undec gain is 11, dodec gain is 12, icosane is 20 but let's just stick with the first 10 for now and how we draw them as line structures. Now, methane, you might say, oh, if I was drawing a line structure with that, it would just be a dot. Technically, that's correct, but no one does that. Write the formula for CH4. Likewise, for ethane, you might say, oh, I could just draw a line. And yeah, that does mean ethane, but it's such a stray looking mark on a piece of paper, we usually write at least the condensed structural formula, CH3, CH3. Then you can certainly do a nice line structure for propane. There's three carbons, butane, there's four, pentane, there's five. You might notice, what's this N in front of the butane and the pentane and frankly, all the others? Uh, it's not necessary. People will know you mean normal butane if you don't write N, but that is what the N stands for in front of all these. It's normal, meaning straight chain hydrocarbon, not a isomer of butane or whatever these are. Uh, and that's the whole point. Once you get to four carbons, now you have the possibility of isomers. Anyway, continuing with our notes here, hexane is six carbons, two, four, six. Heptane would be seven, two, four, six, and seven. Octane is eight, four, six, eight. Nonane is nine, eight, and nine. And then decane is 10, four, six, eight, and 10. And that's it. Those are your simple, unbranched, acyclic, linear alkanes. Now let's get to the rings. There's no such thing as cyclomethane or cycloethane. You have to have three carbons or more in order for this to be a ring. How do you draw a cyclopropane? You guessed it, it's a triangle. So just draw a triangle in that space. Cyclobutane would be a four carbon ring. And yes, it's drawn as a square. Cyclopentane would be a pentagon. Cyclohexane would be a hexagon. And then they get a little bit more involved to draw, but we, we still can do it. Cycloheptane would be a seven-membered ring. So seven lines and seven intersections of lines. Cyclooctane gets a little bit easier. Notice, yes, there's two O's. That's not pronounced cycloctane. That is cyclooctane. And it looks like a stop sign if you were to draw it on a flat piece of paper. Almost all of these rings, with the exception of cyclopropane, can exist in three dimensions where they are actually not a planar flat ring. They're actually quite puckered, and we're gonna talk a lot about in our next unit when we look at conformational analysis, but we can still draw them as if they are flat polygons on a piece of paper. Uh, now you might get a little bit overwhelmed if you think about how to do a nine or 10 membered ring, but I'll show you a trick that most chemists use. If you wanna draw a nine membered ring, think of it as a six membered ring fused to a five membered ring and then simply erase the bridging bond between the two. That is nine carbons connected in a chain. Similarly, with a 10-membered ring, we don't draw it all stretched out like a giant crown. You draw two hexagons fused together, and then you simply erase the bond in the middle. That is a cyclodecane. It's also easier to see and not have to count the carbons once you get to that. Uh, likewise, an 11-membered ring could be a 6-7 fused system without the bridging bond in between. Okay, so now what if we put uh, alkyl branches on either a ring or a carbon chain? Uh, branches are named in the same way that the parent chain is named, with the prefix denoting the number of carbons in the branch. So a methyl is one hydrogen shy of methane, so it would be a CH3 group often abbreviated as ME, just so you don't just subscript something. Uh, an ethyl would be a C2H5 branch, often abbreviated ET, and so on and so forth. If you had a propyl side chain, PR, butyl side chain, BU, etc. And then there's a couple of others that I just want to show you that are not from straight chain alkanes. They sometimes have a little functionality in them, and they're very common. So I would like you to commit these to memory. A vinyl is uh, a alkene branch. It's specifically a CH, CH2 branch, which means I could really draw it like that, where it's attached to something at that carbon. That's what this line off of it means. 
uh, that's just a common enough branch. Phenyl, uh, often abbreviated as PH, is a benzene ring attached to uh, a larger carbon chain. So it's one hydrogen shy of a benzene. And then lastly, these are just hydrocarbon, isopropyl and tert butyl. Isopropyl is abbreviated IPR. And it is a propyl chain, but it's branched and connected at the middle of a three carbon chain. So let's say I have some long carbon chain, and instead of it being a propyl branch, it's branched like that. So it looks like a V sticking off of the chain. A tert butyl is abbreviated TBU. And similarly, if I have some long carbon chain here, it's a butyl group, but it's not an N butyl group. It's tertiary, which means the carbon attached to the main chain, uh, if I break that bond, is attached to three other carbons. It's actually a quaternary carbon in this case, attached to a total of four. Sort of looks like a chicken foot sticking out of the ground. So those are just some of the common branches. And lastly, let's put this together and learn some systematic rules for how to name uh, these alkanes. Number one, you identify the longest carbon chain and you number the branches so you have branches on the lowest numbers. Uh, identify, name, and number the branches and then we list them alphabetically. You'll see this when we start to do some examples. Uh, there are prefixes that are used if you have multiples of the same branch. So if I have a long carbon chain and there's a methyl over here and another methyl over here, we don't say methyl, methyl, we say dimethyl, meaning two for uh, di meaning two, tri meaning three, tetra meaning four, and it goes on. Uh, prefixes for multiples and italicized prefixes are ignored in the alphabetizing. So tert butyl is actually alphabetized under B. Uh, dimethyl would be alphabetized under M, and you'll see that when we do some examples. And then some nitpicky rules. Commas are put in between numbers. Dashes are between numbers and words. And then if we come across one with a complex branch, I don't think we have one today, uh, you'll, you'll do that by naming and numbering the substituent from the branched carbon. Again, we'll come back to these rules as we use them. Starting right now, so here is an alkane. And the first thing you want to do is find how many carbons the longest contiguous chain of carbons is in a sequence. And I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. So this is an octane. And that's actually how my name will end. I kind of start with how the molecule's name is going to end. So this is an octane derivative. Now if I had to number this, I would actually number this molecule as it's drawn right to left, not left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You don't have to write the numbers down, but I'm doing it in this case. And then it shows me I have a branch on carbon number four. If I were to number it left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I would have a branch on carbon five, and I wanna get lower numbers for the branches for now. Later we'll get to molecules that contain functional groups and we'll see that those are taken, uh, those get higher priority. But what we have is an ethyl, and it's on carbon number four, and that's the only branch. The rest of this is just an octane. So this is not octane, this is ethyl octane, all one word, and then I put a four and a dash in front of it. So let's try another one right next to it. Again, I'm going to find the longest carbon chain. Uh, looks like left to right, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is a hexane derivative. And I have a methyl, another methyl, and a third methyl as branches coming off of that. Notice that you don't combine them and make it a propyl. A propyl would be a three carbon chain coming off of this somewhere, but that's a one carbon chain, a second one carbon chain, and a third one carbon chain. So we have three methyls, which means this is a trimethyl hexane, and I have to say where all the methyls are, even though it might sound redundant at first, they are on carbons two, two, and three. And that's exactly how you name this. This would be two comma two comma three, Tri methyl and then hexane. So I'd like you to hit pause and try the last two. We get a cyclic one at the end there and a lengthier one and then check back and see how you did. Okay, let's see how you did. So uh, this one I'm gonna number left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is a decane. Here we have an isopropyl group and here we have an ethyl group. And alphabetically, E comes before P when you alphabetize. 
uh, and then I list the numbers in front of each of those branches. So here we have two different branches. We have an ethyl on three, so three dash ethyl dash five dash isopropyl. Actually, hold on a second. Isopropyl is actually alphabetized under I. You can make a note of that if you want to. Tert butyl is alphabetized under B because it's got an italicized prefix, but isopropyl is taken as all one word. Uh, and then what is this? This is a decane. And then lastly, our parent chain is the ring, the cyclohexane ring. So the name is going to end in cyclohexane. And then we have two branches. We have a methyl and we have an ethyl. So how do I number this? Which one, where do I start when you're numbering a ring? Well, because it's arbitrary, you get to pick a little bit and you're going to do it such that you get the lowest set of numbers for your branches. So those two carbons are carbons one and two. And then just thinking forward, who's gonna go in front of the name? Well, ethyl is gonna go first because it's alphabetized under E as opposed to methyl under M. So if ethyl is in the front of the name anyway, and since I get to pick, I'm going to pick this to be carbon number one, and that will be carbon number two. So we get one dash ethyl dash two dash methyl cyclohexane, all one word at the end there. So that's how we name molecules that have branches when they are cyclic or with their longest chain. That's your parent chain. Uh, and going forward, we'll see some other examples where we incorporate functional groups. That'll just add to this list of rules. But we're still going to follow these rules with the number of carbons being the main thing and listing branches alphabetically and abbreviating those branches. Okay, thanks for watching.